Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And good, good afternoon to Labor Rights of Dominica. I want to recognize the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Roosevelt Skerritt, and political leader of the Dominica Labor Party. Our dignitaries at the head table, members of government, members of the diplomatic corps, other parliamentarians, the media, ladies and gentlemen, women of labor, good afternoon. It is indeed a pleasure to be here in the beautiful village of Point Michel, in the Sufria constituency at this delegates conference of the Dominica Labor Party, the party of choice for Dominica. We are here to show solidarity and support to the Dominica Labor Party, especially our political leader and prime minister, who is under constant attack on a daily basis, both by the formal and informal opposition. Today, I need to speak specifically to the women of labor. We are here to stand in solidarity with one another, to strengthen one another, so that we do not cower when the pressure of politics are brought to us, are brought to bear on us day in and day out. We need to be steadfast in our loyalty and allegiance to our party. We will hear the negatives every day. We will be targeted because it is, it is perceived that we as women are weak and cannot take the pressure. But we must dispel that myth. We must stand firm in our resolve to ensure that as women of labor, we help make things happen in the Dominica Labor Party and in our beautiful nature Isle Dominica. We must understand our role in the Dominica Labor Party, and it is a very pivotal and significant one. Without our input, our support, and our commitment, some very important things will probably not happen, and we must never lose sight of that. So we need to be alert, to be ready and willing, and to defend our party, our political leader, and all those who are involved in ensuring that the Dominica Labor Party survives for another 58 years and that we sweep the polls whenever the general elections are called. One of our greatest strengths as women is the ability to pray without ceasing. We pray all the time, so we need to remember all our people in prayer. The names are too numerous to mention, but we know them. So please, let us keep the Labour Party constantly in prayer. We should not forget also the women who are no longer with us, those who have made a significant contribution to the Dominica Labour Party. We must keep their memory alive among us. Then there are those who are with us still, not as strong as they used to be, but still contributing meaningfully nonetheless. We must ensure that we work assiduously to keep the labor flame burning within our homes and communities. We must never underestimate our role as women of labor. We need to understand the positive impact that we can make on our families, our communities, and our country. The majority of our single families is headed by women. We go to the PTA meetings to church group meetings, to community meetings. Our women are there in huge numbers. And even at our political meetings, our women are the ones in the forefront with the loudest voices cheering our men on. The women of labor, let me hear you. And even on the political front, the women are so involved with so much vigor and energy. To emphasize that, let me inform you that on last year's Fob list of the world's 100 most powerful women, three of the world's top five were politicians. There are eight women heads of state, several new faces, and almost every political returnee from last year's list moved up the rankings. And we ask the question, why? Because there cannot be true democracy unless women's voices are heard. 
So our voices must be heard. Not only when we are discussing soap operas like Young and Restless and the detectives of CSI and Criminal Minds, but our voices must be heard loud and clear on the issues that affect our families, our political party, our government, and our country. We must speak out against the violence taking place in our schools among our students and between our students and teachers. Talk to your children, listen to them, go to your children's schools, not to curse up the teachers, but to find out about the welfare of our children. Our children are our future, so we need to secure that future. We have to help the Ministry of Education and our government to curb or eradicate behavioral problems in our schools. We must speak out against the acts of crime and violence at our various tourist sites, which are impacting negatively on our tourism industry, which is so vital to our economy. We must speak out against the misuse of drugs which are destroying our young people and our productive sector. As women, we must be firm in our resolve for what is right. We must be focused and never lose sight of what our priorities should be and set them right. We must speak out against character assassination which destroys the good name of some of the most prominent people in our country. We need to stand up against vilification and verbal abuse of our women from the men in our society. Those with no testicular fortitude, but who hide behind radio microphones and radio talk shows about our mothers, our sisters, our friends, our daughters, and other women in Dominica. <laughs> Remember, sisters, an affront on one woman is an affront on all women. We must stand in defense of our Prime Minister and all the negativity that is being leveled at him by those who have nothing better to do with their time. We must let our voices be heard loud and clear on the development plans and social programs of the Dominican Labour Party government. Government has put a number of programs in place for our young people and our elderly. There are programs in education at all levels, skills training, health, social services, housing, among others. We must talk about our foreign policy, our solid foreign policies, which have brought so much benefit to our country, thanks to the visionary leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt. We must defend our relationship with the People's Republic of China, with Venezuela, with Cuba, with Morocco, with Serbia, and all our other benefactors and friends. While we maintain our sovereignty, we must never lose sight of the fact that we have friends who have been good to us. And let us remember, God doesn't like ugly. In spite of all of the above though, and the fact that what we are referred to as being the weaker of fairer sex, we can no longer continue to hold on to the myth that a woman's place is in the home and be forever standing in the shadows. These days are over and done with. We must begin to take our rightful place in society, especially on the political front. The United Nations have made a clarion call for more women in parliament and I think we have some very capable women who have the ability to answer that call. Our place is not only to organize fundraisers, jump up and wave the flags, follow the train, and shout the loudest start meeting. But we must get involved in the serious business of the party. We have been empowered, we have been taught, and we have learned well. Let us now put our words into action. We must participate in decision-making and policy formulation in our country. We must inform and educate ourselves on what is happening in the world around us, nationally, regionally, and internationally. Remember, sisters, the world is a global village. This means when one country sneezes, we all catch cold. So we need to be very much in tune to what is happening around us. 
We also need to be supportive of one another as women. It is always said that women are women's own worst enemy. But we can rise above that. We all have different personalities, but when one of our labor women hurts, we all should hurt as well. We should be one another's keeper and be there when times are rough. That, I'm sure, is the principle of the Dominica Labor Party. As I end, I want to wish us well. I want to reiterate that we must stand firm with the Dominican Labour Party. We must stand again, I repeat, in full support of our Honourable Prime Minister and other Ministers of Government and our parliamentary representatives. Let us not help others to malpare our party and our government. If we are displeased about something, which we will always or sometimes be, Find the proper channel in which to vent. Do not wash our dirty linen in public. In closing, I want to borrow a quote from the late great Thomas Jefferson, former president of the United States of America, in his inaugural speech. And I want you to listen to that very carefully. And I quote, a good government is one which shall restrain men from injuring one another, and shall not take from the mouth of labor the bread that labor has earned. We must not allow anybody to take from our mouth the bread that the Dominican Labor Party has worked so hard to bake and to feed us with. I say to you at this time, may God bless the Commonwealth of Dominica. May God bless the Honorable Prime Minister and Ministers of Government. May God bless the women of labor, and may God bless the Dominican Labor Party. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs>